So now we've got plenty of plant symbols in here, we can set about trying to set up the aesthetics of the symbols also for conceptual work. The beauty of these uh, plant symbols is that you can use them for, for both. You can use them for the concept plan, for getting your ideas down, and then change them over to look like uh, planting plan symbols later on. We've done it in the opposite way around, but you'll still get the idea. Okay, so for me to change the symbols for each of these, what I can do is double click on one and select definition and edit it. From here over on the right, you can see this copy from symbol. If I hit this, what it's doing is it's giving me a uh, drop down list of, of other symbols. So I can grab them out of the library and if you've downloaded the content libraries uh, you will have many different files like I do here. So you might find something in some of these folders that you like. I'm going to grab uh, this one, will do, and go OK. And now it's downloading it from the internet. You might have already downloaded the content and it's added that in. I'll hit OK. And now you can see that it has added that color in from that symbol for me into my plan. You'll notice a couple of things in that, well the first one that's pretty obvious is there's a gradient across these and it's different depending on each plant. Um, gradients work uh, like that, they change from one color to another over a distance. This might be the effect that you want, it also might be uh, misleading, it's uh, each to their own. The other thing that you'll notice is that it's it's gotten rid of the internal lines that we saw coming off from out from the center point. And if I go back to my library, you'll see this is the actual symbol and it's got lines coming out. The reason for that is is because it's we've got mass plants selected. Mass plants gets rid of the internal line work where our plants overlap. So if I selected this, went to my object info panel and turned mass plants off, now it's bringing back all that extra detail inside of it for me. This might be desirable, it might not be. Um, so I'm going to leave that like that and then we'll have another example of over here. Let's do the next one. Back to definition by double clicking. Again I'm going to copy from a symbol and I'm going to find something a little bit different this time. This time I'll grab something that's got a, um, a bit more of a randomized perimeter and OK, and OK, it's thinking, and there we go. It's added the data in, and because this the margin on this plant um, was not a perfect circle, it's added that data in, and even though we've got mass plants, you still see some detail. And then again, if I selected this and turned mass plants off, Uh, you can see that detail of the interior alignment comes back in. You'll just have to see what's appropriate for you, but um, everyone's got their own taste. Okay, so I'm going to leave the mass plants on for each of these. And let's do this one last tree that we have here copy from symbol and I'm going to find something out of my lists uh, let's go for something in trees trees deciduous alright let's grab this one whatever it is And there we go, and OK. And OK. There we go, it's popped that in, and again, that has given us uh, the just the outline because mass plants was on. If I turn that off, then I get more of the detail back in. 
Okay, so this has allowed us to use symbols, bring some color in, make it look interesting. Uh, this may be what you want, and it may not be what you want. So we've got some detail in now on these plants. Now we've got to be able to turn on or off different parts at different times for the type of plan output that we want. So in a conceptual plan, we might want these colored versions and no tags. And in a planting pan, we might just want an outline and tags. So how do we change between these? Uh, the trick is this first tab here in our navigation palette. Uh, it's classes. In here, what's probably been created on your behalf when you're making some of these plants is these different uh, classes, especially if you've been importing other plant symbols, they will have had some of these classes already included in them. So they will have been created. Now, when we were setting our preferences in the first video, I think we stipulated that tags would go into a tag class. And so now if I come next to this eyeball and click where the cross is, because all of those tags were created on the tags class, I'm able to turn them on and off very quickly. So when I mouse over it, you can see that they're still in existence. It's just that they're not being visualized. So that's very handy for me to show my plantings very quickly for conceptual work. Now, if I wanted to do the opposite and have this for planting plans, I might want to have the tags on and I might try and turn off this color fill here. So this is looking better for my planting plan, but you'll notice here that this plant has not gotten rid of its color fill and it's to do with the settings that the person who drew this symbol used for classes. So let's have a go at changing the classes around for this plant so it operates the same way as these other ones here for us. So we're going to double click on it and we're going to this time go into 2D graphic and OK. And we're going to have a click through some of the different parts here and see what classes some things are on in our object info panel. So I've just clicked on some random things here and it's saying that this is under a canopy class, which is probably a sensible one for it to be on. And this background place is still is on canopy as well. So what I could do is exit this editing and I could just turn off the canopy as well. And you can see that that has gotten rid of some of that internal line work. And I could try bloom. No, let's try interior line work. Yes. Outline. Yeah. So I can see that that color fill has been put onto the outline class. Now what I would generally use within my plant symbols is definitely the tags and outline is just a simple black color for the outline. Then I would use the color fill as a color and then any of these other ones would be a bonus on top. So let's uh, go in there and we'll look at changing a few things around to different layers so we can get the result that we wanted. So let's edit some of these classes. I'm going to double click on the plant and then select 2D graphic and go OK. This brings me in to be able to edit the different lines and shapes within this. And I'm just going to drag a few things out of the way to see what we've got here first. So I've got an object that's been built up with a few different shapes. So I'd say uh, these sort of decorative elements could stay on that canopy layer and that would be fine. This one here we've got set as outline. Now if I've got something as an outline I definitely want it to have a black line around the outside and probably no color fill so that I could use it for my planting plans. So I'm probably just going to delete that one. Next I'm going to have a bit of a look around and I am going to have a look through here and here we go I've got something which is set up as outline which is great and now I've got another one which is also outline um, I might delete one of those so that I only have one outline so it's simple on my planting plan later and 
I could probably bring these objects back into where they came from if I wanted. Might sit those over the top. Doesn't really matter what I do here. Um, as this is just a quick example. All right, one of the keys from here though is this color fill layer because I want something that sits in the background that'll just be a plain color if I needed to mask these plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outline and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go edit paste in place. So what it's done is it's made a second copy of that exactly where it came from. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to the class of plants components color fill. And you can see that that disappeared straight away because I have the color fill class off. I'm going to turn that back on so that I can see it. And I'm going to select it there. And I can see I've got it selected because it's the color fill one. And I'm going to turn on a solid color for this. And I'm going to choose just a green. There we go. So now this one would be that color fill that I can control out in my... Uh, general design layer. So let's go out and have a look. So now if I turned off the canopy, it's getting rid of some of the line work underneath. If I turned off my color fill, it's getting rid of that green for me. That's handy, but it's not exactly what I want yet. What I'm going to do is go back in and I'm going to set this up so that that color fill is actually sitting at the back underneath all of the other uh, line work and colors. So I can select it, right click and go send to back and now it's sitting right at the back. So that might be the result that I'm after. So now I can turn these different things off using the classes and I get, get the result I want for my planting plan. What we're going to do next is show uh, how the mass plants function works and, and what data it chooses to mass. So on this example here, we've got this sort of vibrant green color, which is, has been massed. So I'm going to put in a couple of these trees and see what happens. Here we go. I'm using this polyvertex mode. And because I've got mass plants automatically coming on, you can see it's deleted that internal line work, got on rid of the extra lines, and I uh, just used a color fill. But what determined that that color fill came up, we're going to show you now. So if I double click on here and go to the 2D graphic to edit and go OK, I can look through here and find the, the, the color fill object. Now this is what was showing as the that outline in my mass objects why i'll tell you and show you now by illustrating this i'm going to right click and send this to the front and now i'm going to exit and let's see what happens so now it's gone to black uh, outline now the reason that that has happened is because this black outline that we have at the back is the object that's sitting lowest in the stacking order. It's been sent to the bottom. Now, whatever object is sent to the bottom will be what shows up when you mass plant. So if I had have just selected, for instance, this uh, little shape here, right clicked and sent that to the back and exited, what we're getting is that it's only showing us now that one object. So the critical part for this is probably that you set up your uh, color fill as the most uh, <laughs> back object. How do I say that better um, after three glasses of wine? So send to back uh, and exit. And now that's working as our, as our back object. All right, so let's turn off these different fills and canopies and now we have this ready for a planting plan. We might also want to get rid of our internal line work on our tree. Okay, so how do we get this set up so that it looks different on two different plans? Okay, 
Let's illustrate it by using viewports and sheet layers. So I'm going to select this by drawing a square over the top, going to view and create viewport. I'm going to put it on this layer planting plan that we've already made earlier on and go OK. And it's centered across with the current visualizations, which is pretty good for a planting plan. Just black outlines, crosses in the middle and tags coming off. Obviously, I'd do a bit more work to neaten this up, but it's not too bad. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my sheet layers where this is, and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to edit this second copy and I'm going to call this my concept plan. So now I've got a second copy, which is about a concept plan and I've got my original planting plan back here. What I'm able to do is select this copy on this concept plan sheet layer and go to classes button down here and turn on or off different classes so that I get the visualization that I want. So I'm turning on those color fills and line work so I get the prettiness of my, uh, or maybe not so pretty uh, instances of my symbols. And I'm gonna turn the tag off and go okay. Now I've got two sheets with the same planting symbols populating them, but they're being shown in very different ways. And this is one of the strengths of Vectorworks that I'm very quickly able to set this up. You'll notice that on my concept plane, I've still got these crosses on for my tags. What you may want to do as you uh, get your own systems is set the um, crosses to be up on their own class so that you could then turn them off later. Um, and you'd be able to do this through the preferences tool here underneath annotation. You'd be able to set up the tick class, create a class for those, and then turn them off if you wanted to.